Medical? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I hope you're all doing well today. Uh, we are on lesson nine of the book of Ruth, and the title of the lesson is Plan and Patience. And we're so we are currently in no, no patience? <laughs> no, 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 we don't want to study that. Oh, we don't want to study. <laughs> like I said, you heard me earlier. I said this lesson is for me this week. So anyway, anyway, back to our thing. So we are currently studying the book of Ruth, as you all know, and we are in chapter three, where we have been learning about Boaz and Ruth's possible engagement. And I say possible because of where we left off in our lesson last week. And if you remember, Ruth, by instruction of her mother Naomi, had her mother-in-law Naomi had gone to Boaz at the threshing floor in hopes that he would agree to marry her and becoming their kinsman redeemer. It was a plan that Naomi had for Ruth, and Ruth went and followed the plan. And by doing so, we saw last week the success of the plan. Ruth went to Boaz, lay down at his feet, uncovering them while he slept. And then when he awoke because his feet were cold, he finds Ruth laying there. And being startled, he asks, who is this? <laughs> and Ruth tells him, it is me, Ruth, your maidservant. Followed by, hey, by the way, Will you take me as your wife? <laughs> right? And Boaz agrees, but then he drops the bombshell on her. Because in verse 12, where we left off last week, he says, Well, now it is true that I am a close relative. However, oh boy, don't we hate those, those things. The howevers or the buts. However, there is a relative closer than I. Boaz is informing Ruth that there is another relative who is a closer relative to Elimelech, Naomi's dead husband, than him, and he has the first right of being her redeemer. <clears throat> so the final success of the plan has now been put on hold, and that takes us to today's <clears throat> lesson, the plan and the patience. We'll start in verse 13 of chapter three. It says, stay here tonight, and in the morning, if he wants to redeem you, good, let him redeem you. But if he does not want to redeem you, as surely as the Lord lives, I will now lie here until morning. That was Boaz speaking to Ruth. So she lay at his feet until morning, and she arose before one could recognize her. Then he said, do not let it be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. And he told her, bring the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did so, he shoveled six measures of barley into her shawl. Then he went into the city. When she came to her mother-in-law, she said, is that you, my daughter? Then she told her all that the man had done for her. And she said, he gave me these six measures of barley for he said, do not go back to your mother-in-law empty handed. And then verse 18, then she <coughs> said, Sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out, for the man will not rest until he has concluded the matter this day. Now, in these six verses, we see that Ruth is told to wait two times, two times, once by Boaz, and my, no, why don't you know if my computer's going to freeze up on me? <laughs> So here in verse 13, we see where Boaz tells her to stay. And then again in verse 18, Naomi tells her, hey, sit still, my daughter. And it is important to note that this follows Ruth first being told Boaz in verse 11, if you remember, not to fear. This is really good advice for us all to grab onto. For when we are having success with a plan, especially if it involves ministry or something else that has to do with the Lord, and then suddenly we hit a wall, a speed bump, or what appears to be a dead end, we need to not panic or be afraid 
but be like Ruth and stay where we are at and wait. And the other thing we see here in Ruth's waiting is that she is to rest. She is to rest. In verse 13, when Boaz tells her to stay, he tells her to stay the night and lie down, which she does. And in verse 14, as we just read, she rested sleeping where? But at Boaz's feet until early morning. And then again here in verse 18, Naomi tells her to sit still, sit still, where the Hebrew word that is used here is yashab, which can also be translated as wait or rest. As you will see, the same word is used back in chapter 2, verse 7, where it says, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning until now, though she what? Rested, yashab, a little in the house. In scripture, we are told repeatedly, repeatedly that we are to what? Wait on the Lord. But in our waiting, we are also to be at rest in our waiting. Exodus 33, 14 says this, and the Lord answered, my presence will go with you, and what? I will give you rest. And waiting on the Lord, I know for me, there are times I become anxious, which then brings about sleeplessness, becoming irritable, ask my wife, and even sometimes becoming withdrawn. But when I seek him while waiting on him, he comes close. If I seek him while waiting on him, he draws close. It tells us that it's a promise out of the book of James 4, 8, where it says, draw near to him and he will draw near to us, allowing us to what? Enter into his rest. Now back to Ruth, where we will see now, where we will now look at Boaz, uh, who does not rest. In verse 16, Ruth has come home from staying the night, correct? And she came home from the threshing floor, and after telling Naomi all that the things Boaz had said, which would have included the part about, you know, that other close relative, Naomi in verse 18 not only tells Ruth to be still, but gives her assuring words to Ruth, telling her that, hey, don't worry about this, my daughter-in-law, because that Boaz, he is not going to rest until he has concluded the matter this day. All right, so don't worry about it. So now, so far in going through chapter three, we have looked at a plan that Naomi had in getting Ruth and Boaz together in marriage. Now, when a plan is made for it to succeed, it always is a good thing when you have the willing participants, right? Yeah. Yeah. And here in our lesson, we have exactly that. For both Ruth and Boaz are completely all in. They're all in on this. But as we have learned, there was a glitch. For Naomi did not know that there was another relative in the mix that, you know, had to be considered. But Boaz, Boaz, he knew this, which leads me to believe that he already had done his research, we might say. And this also tells me that he was a guy, because of this, who was, you know, pretty smitten and in love. And he had already set his eyes on the prize, and that was Ruth. Now, how many of us guys have been there? Come on, Ronnie, raise your hand. I know you raise your hand. Right? So, and now, how surprised he must have been when Ruth beat him to the punch, when she was the one who asked him to marry her. So then following his astonishment, it would have turned to him to excitement. For then he knew that, hey, wow, this gal Ruth, she likes me too. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, I'll, never, yeah. I'll never forget, you know, before Doreen and I started dating, I, I think I've shared this with you. I, we were teaching Sunday school, and I saw her in the Sunday school class. I said, nope, God, I ain't even going to try for that one. That is way out of my league. I was skinny back then. <laughs> and, this is, 
And then she ended, up, she ended up inviting me to a Bible study. And I thought she was talking to the person next to me. So then she came up to me later because you never gave me an answer about, you know, going to the Bible study. I said, oh, I thought you were talking to Rob. She goes, no, I'm doing it. And then later on when we had a Sunday school <laughs> gathering down at the beach and stuff, um, Doreen and I, we went to uh, this hamburger joint. And as we're waiting there, she leaned in and kind of grabbed my arm and leaned in kind of close and showed affection towards me. I was a little freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Rob. Sound like you weren't <laughs> in right she was she not too into it. No, I I, I, I was saying, saying, let me tell you, she was she was so far out of my You know we're going to ask Doreen if this is a true story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all true. It's always, there's always two points of view though. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we should probably go back to our <laughs> back to Boaz. And how we start, how we start to get insight on a man driven by love who is not going to rest until he finds a way for him to have Ruth as his wife. And we will see that in the upcoming weeks. And just as Naomi had a plan, guess who else now has a plan? And that is Boaz. Now, in our lesson today, we have ourselves an economy. Ruth is to rest and wait while Boaz is taking action. And for us, there are times we are to wait, which seems to be most of the time, correct? Mm -hmm. While other times we are to move forward. We are to move forward, which makes us wonder, how do we know when to do one or the other? How do we know? And that is a good question. And I don't think there's one simple answer because everybody's situation is different. But in today's lesson, what we see uh, for Ruth is she has been told to wait by two different people. Well, with Boaz, he has nobody telling him to stand down. So what we can take away from this is to be open to what God wants for us to be doing, what he wants for us to be doing. And if others, and if this is important, the others being people who we know to be walking with the Lord. The others are to be people who are walking with the Lord, people who we know we can trust, who are telling us to hold off on doing something. Then I think it is wise to seriously consider what they are telling us. Correct? Have we follow that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and if we are not getting any resistance, though, we're not getting any resistance then we should be moving forward while remaining, here's another important part, yielded to the Holy Spirit. But with that said, let me say it again. Everybody's situation is different. And for us seasoned saints, that's us, us seasoned saints, we can all testify to the times when we waited and the blessing that came from it. And also, the times when we tried to move on ahead of God and the heartache that followed. Mm -hmm. Do I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> that is why scripture tells us that the older men and women are to teach the younger because of the wisdom we have obtained by not just, just doing the wrong things, but doing the things right. God is always faithful when we wait on him and his uh, when Moses led the Hebrews out of Egypt to the edge of the Red Sea, things looked pretty bleak, and they were told to stand still. But what if they chose not to? What if they chose not to? If they tried to fight the Egyptian army, they would have been slaughtered. If they jumped into the Red Sea, they would have drowned. If they surrendered back to the Egyptians, Oh, they'd have been more happy to take them back into slavery, and it would have been even worse than before, far worse. But they waited on the Lord, and he blessed them, taking them through the Red Sea while killing their enemy. Because of their obedience to God, they lived while the Egyptians who opposed God died. All through the Bible, we see God blessing those who waited on him. Abraham and Sarah on having a baby in their old age. David had to wait while facing opposition before he became king. 
Then we have the disciples who were instructed by Jesus himself to wait in Jerusalem after his resurrection for the promise of the Holy Spirit. They obeyed and they not only received the Holy Spirit, but were filled by him as well. And then there are the blessings that not only come to us for the obedience and waiting, but the blessings that overflow to others. The blessings that overflow to others. In our lesson today, we see a blessing Ruth received from Boaz and how it also became a blessing for Naomi. Let's look again at verses 15 through 17. And he told her, bring the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did so, he shoveled six measures of barley into her shawl. Then he went into the city. When she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Is that you, my daughter? And then she told her all that the man had done for her. In verse 17, and she said, He gave me these six measures of barley for her. He said, Do not go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Ruth was asked to stay the night by Boaz. She does, and then in the morning, he fills her shawl up with lots of grain. Not just for her, but for who else? But for Naomi, too. The blessing did not just stop with Ruth. And another takeaway we can get from this is that God uses others to bring blessings. And more importantly, we need to be willing and available to be used by God to be a blessing, even when it comes at a cost. And this is the second time we've seen in our study of the book of Ruth that Boaz gave of his harvest to these two women. Yes, it wasn't much. And yes, Boaz was a wealthy man. But all the same, he did not have to do that. He did not have to do that. And for us, how many times have we been blessed by a small, kind gesture? And what a blessing it always is when we are able to be the one who is there for somebody else. The start of chapter 3, Ruth was given a plan. In the middle of chapter 3, she executes the plan. And now at the end of the chapter, she's having to wait on the plan. And in waiting, as we have seen, she did not fear. Isaiah 41.10 tells us, Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Ruth also did not become anxious. And for us, we have the antidote in Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made, be made known to God. And Ruth did not try and take the matters in her own hands, but instead she sat still and rested. Psalm 46.10 tells us, Be still and know that I am God. In Matthew 11, 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And then Hebrews 4, 9 and 11. So there remains a full and complete Sabbath rest for the people of God. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall. Lest anyone fall. Let's pray. Father God, how grateful and thankful we are for this lesson today. Lord, I, I know this message was really for me this week. Lord, how I need to just wait on you and be at rest in you and just trust you. And Lord, if there's any of my friends here, uh, my brothers and sisters that are going through something today, Lord, our, our, their plans have changed, have been shaken, Lord, May they grab hold of these scriptures that we just read, Father, out of Psalm and Matthew and Hebrews. And Lord, just be at rest in you. And just allow you to be working things out. And Lord, if there's something that we need to be doing to be a blessing to somebody else, show us, Father God. Help us to step out of our comfort zone. And Lord, just to be there. And maybe it's just a compliment we need to give to somebody or, a, or just a friendly hug or a pat on the back, Lord, just to be there for them. Lord, thank you for this book of Ruth, and I thank you for this time uh, we have to study your word and just uh, how it ministers to us and what we can get from it. And 
Lord, may we grow closer to you through it. And Lord, just as it says in James 4 a, Lord, if we draw close to you, you will draw close to us and we can enter into your presence and find that rest. And what a blessing and truth that is. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. <coughs>